That might send the Yankees to the World Series. Boy, the hero in Game 7. Clemens has set a Major League record for strikeouts in a game. Derek Jeter with one of the most unbelievable plays you will ever see by a shortstop. Red Sox fans have longed to hear it. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. Welcome to Fan Base, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports, the holiday episode. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> John Senecal, Brian Shackman here with you as always. Uh, what we're going to cover today, a couple things. We're going to update you sort of on MLB, what, our take on the season starting and the season in general. If it starts, when it starts. Yeah, exactly. And then sort of your take on where the Yankees are right now. I'll have a little bit of a, a thought on the Red Sox outfield, and then we'll have a little fun at the end with uh, some holiday movies. How's that sound? What we all want for Christmas and <laughs> I want Hanukkah it. right now, right? It is. We're in the throes of it, although um, the way the economy is and everything has been a lot more clothes and a lot fewer toys in the Shackman household. So we, we sort of do a, a hybrid. We do Christmas and Hanukkah. Cause yeah. I honestly, I'll just say this as an aside. I don't feel like any kid should be robbed of the holiday spirit. Well, because it's, it's going on all around you, It's too. just like, what, whatever, like, it, it's not even a religious thing anymore, so, like, why not just let the kid enjoy it, put a stinking stock in It's a in commerce there. thing. Whatever, like, I mean, it's just it's a nice time of year. Why not let the kid it's enjoy the it? the most wonderful was, time of the year. And we're getting was, some snow. I know, we're, yeah, well, we, well, when people listen to this, they'll have gotten a lot of snow. Yeah, um, hopefully. So Unless I, the weathermen are wrong. They've never been wrong. I, <laughs> I will say that uh, it seems unlikely that the baseball season will start in early April. No, it doesn't sound like it's going to. Right now, it sounds like they're talking about May and they want to be tested and the players want to be tested. And then, of course, everyone's pissed off. What I've been reading is like, well, why do these guys get to get get to be getting the shots? Right. And what about the rest of these essential people? So here we go, you know. So I think that, I mean, listen, right now the vaccine is just coming out. It's essential workers, frontline workers, and then it's going to obviously the most vulnerable. And I think people like me and you probably won't get it until around May. If we're lucky. If so, we're lucky, I'd say probably more later than that, maybe in the summertime. So, like, I wouldn't have a problem with baseball players getting it a little bit early, like in April or whatever. But I, I just think that they, your point is they, they want to wait until they can guarantee fans in the stands. I would say that, and definitely, I think the owners definitely. I mean, this this would happen before. This was the whole raggle before, like that they're talking about. Is they they're not, they need the fans in the stands. You know, it's not just a TV contract. So that is definitely what I'm thinking. The owners want a t- enough time so they can get at least some portion of the fans there. Maybe 25 percent, hopefully, maybe 50 percent. But I would say in May, you're not going to get 50 percent. Well, but I actually unless it's Texas. I'm looking at it the other way around. Like I, I do not feel like last season was a legitimate baseball season. Right. I just don't. I don't. And it's not even like this whole asterisk talk. It just wasn't a major league baseball season. So I feel if they play fewer than 140 games, I'm going to feel the same way again. And so I, to me, it's more important to have as close to a full season as it is to have the fans. Now they're thinking about the money, but I, I honestly. The reason, one of the main reasons I love baseball is the uniformity of statistics and records. Right, right. So, and that's all blown out the window when sure, you shorten everything. Totally, and so like I understand they're not going to do 162, so we're not going to be able to assess a whole bunch of different metrics that I like to follow. But at the same time, like if they go 120, I'm going to be like it's garbage. You know what I mean? It's, well, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot less games. I mean, it's total garbage. I mean, for the, forever it was what 154, and then it went to 162. That's not a big swing, but people still complain about that. They still complain about that. What are you going to do when it's 40 games? I mean, last year it was 102 games. Is that what it was last year? Less. Less. Yeah. It was 100, 162. Normally, 60 they play. Yeah, so it was 100. It's, it's not even close. It's crazy. Yeah. And so your cutoff is what? How many I, games I, would have, you need to have it feel like? If the Yankees went on to win the World Series, how many games would you need in a regular season? To make it say like it's a real season? Yes. Oh, I would have to say. I mean, no one's going to say. Everyone's going to bitch about it if it's not 162. So I'd have well, to say. Well, it's not going to be. We know that. So let's let's say 150. I don't can, think can, you're going to get that. No, you're not going to get that. If you're going to start it in May, you're not going to get it. I don't think they. I mean, yeah, I think they could probably start in May without fans, um, obviously, but. So here, here's my second question to you now. Is it okay? But they also have to get the players. I mean, if the, they're not going to want the players together unless they've gotten shots, too, right. which makes sense. Then they don't have to worry about so much of this whole bubble thing, which I still think they'll have to kind of do, at least for spring training. If you, if you see the season starting in May, 
uh, and you could go, would you go to a game? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, as long I mean, you know you're going to be wearing a mask in this country for at least another year, probably. How are you going to drink your beer? Well, I mean, you can take your mask you off. Get a, no, but they should sell like a, beer a mask, helmet. a beer helmet mask. Yeah. So that's a group. We should actually, if anyone's listening and wants to come up with a prototype <laughs> where you can drink your beer and wear keep a mask. mask on and not touch your face. You mean work on that for me? The helmet with the, with the, with the, the straw, straw through the mask. Of your mask. Like, like one of those good N95 not masks yeah. with like the respirator, but it's a straw going in. We'll charge like 30 bucks for it. Just for the mask. Well, for the whole the whole thing. Well, that's a deal, dude. You if you go to Yankee so? Stadium, it's like eighteen dollars for a beer. Okay, so maybe oh, we definitely have to make those made in China for includes, sure. It includes the beer, though, too. <laughs> that's a good idea. I like that. Um, so you would go without hesitation. Absolutely. And what if the price? I would have went this year if they let you. I was so hoping that we, I have like this Yankees universe thing, which is probably something like Red Sox do. It's like right. a Red, uh, Red Sox nation, right? So they give you like like special perks, certain games, and that kind of thing, meet and greets, and all that. But uh, I was, we were so hoping that they were going to be like, oh, for the Yankees universe people, you know, we're going to let you come to like a special section in the last, you know, right? Or you know, and then they just have like their VIPs or whatever. Right. But didn't no, happen. didn't happen. Well, they, I was glad to say that because I was going to cancel my Red Sox season tickets if they raised prices. They did not. No, they actually they discounted them a little bit, and then they credit you the. Discount discount which is great because then we my group we just roll over like we rolled over from last year instead of getting a refund so yep. we, uh, my tickets are already uh, ready are, to go right and i was so relieved because the red sox were so bad last year it would have been almost <laughs> <worse. laughs> they would waste the money but, anyway but i don't think they're going to be much better like i really don't unless they, they gotta be better i mean if sale comes back and i mean they can't be much worse dude how much worse can they be well they can't be worse but I mean, okay, so... I mean, it could be... It could always be worse, I guess, but I, I don't see that happening. So you have uh, Renfro or Verdugo in center, Benintendi... Renfro won't play center. So do you think they'll re-sign JBJ, Jackie Bradley Jr.? I heard him come up with the Blue Jays again, but I feel like the Blue Jays are always come up with everybody. they're going to spend money on a bunch of Why people. Why does anybody want to play there, though? Well, right now, Canada's tough. I mean, the NHL's having a huge problem. They're going to be playing in Buffalo, probably. Right, so at least to start the year. So you, you don't even go there. There's a tax issue. There's a weakness of the currency. There's a whole bunch of... It's complicated to play in Toronto. They have to overpay to get people up there. But my point is, like, I they, they signed Hunter Ren, Renfro, and, like, I, I don't feel like they have a great outfield. No, like, I mean, it's not a difference maker. No. And so, and if you lose JBJ, and I think people have a sentimental attachment to him because he's never been a consistent enough hitter, but he's so great on D, and he just the fans love him. And I, I have to be honest, like, and I've said this before, you know, he visited my kid's school a couple of years ago. He's a good person. He's a good guy. Like, he's not yeah, a bad just, guy. Yeah, he but just doesn't, doesn't hit well. He, right, he doesn't hit consistently well. And and they had the statistic. It's a great breakdown I saw from um, somebody in the Boston Globe. His average against. I mean, it's true for most players, but fastball changeup. Uh, breaking ball. Yeah. I mean, like, he can only hit fastball. <laughs> <Yeah, just laughs> straight he down. He can't hit anything else. So uh, he's it's, like Pedro Serrano. <laughs> he's not quite that bad. And they're he, changing their name too. That's another thing we should talk about. We'll talk about the Indians, but I want to. I want to talk quickly about the Red Sox and talk about the Yankees. When we can talk about that. I mean, I don't see if they get Sale and uh, you know Eduardo comes back from his heart ailment from COVID. I still think that they're, if in a 162 season, they're an 80 win team. Like, yeah, they're definitely, I don't think they're a, a first place team or challenging in the AL East, but I mean, they're definitely going to be better. It, it can't be any worse. I mean, Sale's still got something left, hopefully, for you. Yeah, but I think he's a two or a three. He's not a one. And he's all, team. and you just, you just look at him, I feel like he gets, can get hurt anytime. Well, he's so skinny, he's like Ichabod Crane. <laughs> okay, so that's my biggest fundamental thing is that I think that they need to do something big. Do they need and another pitcher? See. They need to go out there and get absolutely. Because if you're going, you're not going to. They're not going to win with offense because they don't have. I mean, Bauer's never going to go there. No, and, and you know, just this is where you realize Betts just in the same way. Betts just helped everybody out there, whether it's taking good pitches or just getting on base and, and creating problems. So I think I think they have to get another frontline pitcher to offset, which is going to be really weird. Can they trade? Do they got some chips? I don't think they have enough. They don't have enough. But then I think about like the Yankees, like. I think they're still an 85-plus win team. The Yankees without, need without a lot of work. Like, what, what's going to happen with LeMahieu? LeMahieu and what? their pitching. They, they have a ton of question marks in pitching. They don't have a lot of pitchers right now. LeMahieu, I mean, they say they're $25 million apart right That's now. That's over the length of a deal. Though. Over the length of a deal, which is basically what he's asking for is one more year, if you put it in right. layman's terms. He, they're saying basically four. He wants five. I figured all along it was going to come down to this four or five years. So are the Yankees just going to overpay him and give him? 
four years at more money. What's the downside? Like, what's his age and so on? He turns think, 32. Because when I think of four to five years, I'm like, that's safe. What? It's not an eight year. It's not a 10 year where they're always a bad But deal. the problem with that contract of a four year deal with him or five year deal with him is you still got Stanton lingering around for seven more years. And then, you know, you got a guy like LeMahieu, if you need him to go into a DH role, hope, obviously he can play first base. We know that. He can go to first base because you can, you know, Voight hasn't even under a long term contract. Right. Um, but you always run into that problem of these DHs spots getting sucked up, and I feel like the Yankees always have that problem. It's like you know, Guys another out, another outfielder or a guy that, an underperforming outfielder, a hurt outfielder, and a guy that you can only throw at DH in maybe one position if he's lucky. Right. So it's, it's they're going to give they'll, they'll they'll cave before. He well, goes. I would think it, there's it, not much it, of a market for him. Though, it, it seems. I mean, the Mets are always coming up for uh, coming up and. And talk. Um, I don't think he would go anywhere else. Maybe I think it's New York Yankees or the Mets. Um, I think he's going to stay in New York with the Yankees. Um, he, the fans love him. He likes being there. So he's they, proven Cash, he can play Brian there. Cashman will, will give him that fit, fit well, here. you know, he always got to go knocking on the door and get the blessing, you know, from the boss, right. you know. So, so but, your your guess is he'll, he stays. He stays. Um, but you know, then then what happens with the rest? You know, you got you got Cole, you got Jordan Montgomery, Debbie Garcia. Severino coming back. Um, Tanaka's a free agent. Paxson's a free agent. Hap's gone. Um, do you get Tanaka back? I would hope so if you can, but you don't hear any of that. Like, right. no, how it's long does Tanaka so go? Why? why is free agency so quiet? Like, it seems I, it's really, the, it's really the, the COVID, I'm telling you. It's like, what was it, two years ago with, with Machado and those guys? And it signed to like, almost like March, was it? That's true. You know, I think there's so much uncertainty that these owners, are, you know, they're playing mind games with the players. But also the, the economics of the game has to right size a little bit for the next two to three years. So right. If they give him 2018 or 2019 money, that's actually not 2021 or 2022 money no. because because the game the revenues are going to shrink at least for this year and possibly even the year after because they're going to have to slash to get people back in. They, gotta they might it out. not be at full capacity for a couple of years. Right. right. So I mean, I think that that's the calculation that ownership is making is that what is the real value here? If they pay in 2018, 2019 dollars, they're probably overpaying by a significant amount. But, but the the, the, the PA and the agents aren't going to take that, that no at all. And so, then the, then 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 the trophy is always sitting out there. I'll just say this. As I always like to say, I think no matter what the Yankees do, as long as Ch- or all this Chapman is their closer, they will never. You know, the more and more that we've talked about him on this podcast, and you brought it up, you've convinced me. Like I've always, like especially the last two years, obviously. You know, once he came back and he, I, I, I there's a cloud over that guy. And I chalked up Altuve to a buzzer or something. Yeah. I know a mirror in the stands, whatever it was. Right. right, I chalked that up. But last year, a guy who you probably won't even see me playing again. Brousseau, yeah. or Broussard, whatever. Took him deep. Took him deep, and took him deep, legit deep. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't... It wasn't right but, over the fence. There was no buzzers involved. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. just straight up, you got yeah. played, you know? Yeah. And then you walk off the mat. And I feel like, I bet you a lot of Yankee fans feel that way. I just, you know, and I, I'm a karma guy. Like, if, you know, he's... But what are you going to do with him? I think he has, what, one more year or two I more years? I need money and trade him. I, I honestly think you can you can come up with a hard throwing double-A guy and find a stopgap closer. I think you can get Liam Hendricks cheaper. I don't I just think that's... I just need to get that, that dig in every time we do it. He's John Senecal. I'm Brian Shackman. This is fan base, a deep dive into the greatest got, rivalry. We're which I'm not saying goodbye. Oh, I'm not I was going to say you can't leave Have out patience. the hot... We're not even doing that. I wanted to quickly talk about the Indians because I, I have a take. It's a hot take a little bit, but... Um, I don't view the Cleveland Indians name with the same negative connotation as something like the Washington Redskins or even the Atlanta Braves. But the Atlanta Braves is another one because he's just saying before we call them Native Americans or the indigenous people, we call them Indians. And it's not like it's Redskin is a negative right. connotation. There's a negative image right. to it. And so I understand that. And I think it's fine for them to rename them. The problem I have is that I can't think of a name. That's why I think Washington did what they did with football, the Washington football. You, they couldn't come up with a name. Do you think that's going to st- I almost feel like that might stick for I'm them. I'm okay with it, actually. I feel like people are just kind of like, yeah, they're the Washington football it club. It kind of works for me. And because <laughs> of this Alex Smith story, my household, my boys and I have been kind of into yeah. them because... We like the story of Alex Smith. I've always liked the Redskins because they were the team when I was growing up. The Hawks. Yeah. They had Rippin and they had, uh, was it Doug Williams? And then the, John uh, Riggins. Uh, Riggins and the, oh, what was the, the, Joe Theismann. They were the, they were the shit. They, they were, they were it. So what do you, what do you think? 
Why is everybody so everybody get so soft? It's like, I get the Redskins, I totally get. But the Indians, it's like now, like if you're going to teach kids about like the Mayflower and all that. And like, you know, obviously, you know, they, they stole their land eventually and all that. But it's like, come on. Like, how many Native Americans do you think are totally pissed off that they, they're called the Cleveland Indians? I think there's there's obviously some. It's been... But is there really like, some? I don't know. Or, is it, just, or is it just for, like... A select few. I mean, this is where you get into politics. and The last couple of years, there's been a lot of clamoring for a lot of things. What I would say is I'd like to know what the options are. So what, you got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We right. call them the Rockers. You call them the HOFers. HOFers. <laughs> the offers. The, I don't know. The Lakesiders. Oh, that's awful. Oh, my God. The, there's not a lot to Cleveland. And, like, look at the Cleveland Browns. They... Who would want to be... The Browns, the though. I mean, what's wrong color? with that? There's nothing wrong with it, but, like, they're stuck being the worst color on the color palette. You know what I mean? It's like, <sighs> brown is the worst. So I don't know what they're going to do, and I... Now, do you think... Is there a plan to figure this out before the season so. starts? No, I just think... That they're, they're just going they're with gonna the gonna, C. They're going to... They're letting people know that they're going to do it, and then they have to figure it out. I, I just... You know, maybe they get the fans involved. Like, even, like, the NHL one with the Seattle Kraken or whatever. Like, I hate that stuff. Like, I want a good name. Yeah, there's like, some real stupid names out there. Like, remember the whole fad with, like, like dumb minor league names? Yeah. And some of them stuck. Like, the Yard Goats. That's a cool one. But, but is it cool, though? Like, I don't But know. it was like, no one knows what it is. Right. I don't and think it's cool. I don't. I personally don't. I mean, I love, that, like, I love that we have, have like, an art for the biscuits, team, lug nuts, right. like, you Blood know, the flying music. squirrels. Right. Because they could sell hats. Um, so that, you, that was the time. You don't have no hot take. You just think it's too politically correct and you'd like to keep it. I would like to keep it. I'd never be able to watch Major League again the same way. <laughs> it's true. And watch the two Asians down the sideline pounding on the shovels saying... There was a lot of... Um, a, lot, a lot of... Um, Racial and ethnic diversity in that movie. There was. <laughs> there was, was. If you really think about it. All right, let's let's talk about movies. Uh, we're gonna end things here on on um, fan base with. Uh, we're gonna pick two of our favorite holiday movies and give you a why. They're not baseball related. That started a week after Halloween on TV. Yeah, that's right. I've already watched a couple of them. I've, I think I've watched one of my favorites, Home Alone. Like yeah, my six kids times. Love that movie. I know my kids like my my freshman in high school like like. Let's watch Home Alone. Yeah. Like, he'll say it, like, every couple days. And I've never watched the sequel, and my 11-year-old's like, Dad, the second one's almost as good as the, the first one. The second one is almost and as I good as like, the first I one. And I was like, I never even touched these. It's got all the original characters. I'm telling you, man. The second one is good. <laughs> I've never seen it. And it's like, usually, like, you know there was a bunch of people sitting around that table, and they were just like, oh, my God. Like, what if this bombs? What if this is the next Police Academy? Right. You know what I mean? We, we got six or seven of those. Right, so. but they also, I didn't realize this. They have like seven Home Alone. Right, they changed kids for the third. His a younger brother did it in the third one, I think. I but now no they're just idea. random kids. So that's number one for you. And Home Alone is a huge favorite. Well, I don't us. think it's number one. Elf or Home Alone is okay. number one for me. So Elf is in my it is in my two. And I'm not saying my top two either. You know, Elf, we just watched it again last night. You can pick up that movie at any point. And it's great. And watch the rest of it. I just saw a thing on, on Elf where they actually shot that when he comes to New York City, they shot that all live in the city because they had no budget for the production in New York City. So they were like, you know what? Screw it. We're not going to shut down any streets. We're not going to do anything other than just we're going to put cameras on him really? and he's going to go. From when he comes in through the Lincoln Tunnel right. and is walking and like grabbing the gum and going through the doors and when he runs up to Santa and he thinks it's Santa, that's just some random dude on the street walking in red. Really? Yeah. And John Favreau was the director. The director. And uh, he and he's, I think, it wasn't his first movie, obviously, but he really showed that he could not only do something substantive, but he could do commercial, and then he ended up doing the Iron Man stuff. And he's but, doing Mandalorian now. I mean, he's like, big deal. Right. I mean, big just, deal. But that was really a huge point in his I remember career. him in Swingers. It was so good with him and Vince Vaughn. Yeah, it was just perfect. But that's how that's his first movie. Yeah, like he, it was such a great movie. To see them progress. The other one for me, it's interesting. I'm going to get a little sentimental, because I was at work the other day, and we had a lull, and... And It's a Wonderful Life is on, and I'm not like, I'm not a huge It's a Wonderful Life fan, but I hadn't watched it in maybe 15 years. Yeah. And you realize how it's it's a dark movie. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's like he I've finally seen it twice in my life. He contemplates suicide. Yeah, it's a rough one. And he's really mean to his wife and his kids. And it wouldn't fit too well right now. Well, it just was interesting (laughs) to go back on it. Well, it's like I go back, and this is such a digression, but like, you ever see Charlie Wilson's War? The, uh, Tom, the Tom Hanks. Hanks. All this women, all this misogynistic, sexist stuff in that movie. And it's like that movie ages so poorly, but it was just so really interesting to me because at the end, it's so it's such a great concept, and and you know, obviously uh, Jimmy Stewart is so great, but I didn't realize I forgot how 
dark it was. There's so many of the How old... How Mr. Potter was, he took the guy's money, didn't tell him. So the, 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 the other Bailey who loses his mind leaves the 8000 in the bank. Mr. Potter grabs it it's, and doesn't give it back. He's a jerk. It's just, just, I was like, oh my God, this, people are awful. They're, and the, all, a lot of these old sitcoms and stuff are just not politically correct. Right. Watch a little Archie Bunker now and then. Oh yeah, but that was also like sort of like subversive. Like they were... <laughs> It made it look bad, but they were also making a political commentary that yeah. was a little more liberal than people. Oh, oh, you can laugh. You can laugh and still hate us. It's true. So we're gonna put. We both have Elf on the list. So uh, obviously you went old school. I went old school, but I could put a bunch. I mean, I haven't watched Scrooge this cycle yet. That was another one, Scrooge. Um, but I just think it's so good. Bill Murray is so. I love brilliant. that movie. Now, do you now do you consider Die Hard a Christmas movie? I do. Yeah, I do. But it's still it's a great action movie. But I mean, I you know, and you see those um, those car battery commercials. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> some funny. some people say that Die Hard Two is a Christmas movie too because he's coming home. Interesting. I, I don't think, necessarily look at it that way. Again, those I don't think that they had another good sequel until like the Jeremy Irons. The one third one was great. Yeah. Second one was a little right. In the four- that one where the train went lateral and went all the way down the station was incredible, but I, I thought that maybe it was a number n- Number three with a vengeance is by far one of my favorite movies. All- I've probably seen that movie like a thousand times. Awesome. <laughs> He's John Seneca, I'm Brian Shack, and this is Fanbase, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports. Enjoy us where you're listening or watching right now, but also you can catch us on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, wherever you want to consume this podcast. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas, everyone.